I bought a few of the $7 Nintendo Switch consoles from Timu, and in this video, we're gonna open them all up and see if it's a scam. You've probably seen some of those ads circulating the internet recently that claim you can get a $7 Switch just for signing up for Timu's app. Now, we'll get into the whole situation and how it works later and how much it paid for everything, but let's just go ahead and start opening the consoles up. So inside of the first package is, of course, a uh, box. Let's go ahead and open this up now. All right, so this looks like a Switch here, but it's a little, what, what language is that? Nintendo Switch. Let's go ahead and open this up and see if it's even a new console. We've got, of course, our white Joy-Cons, which are very slick. Those look cool. Got our tablet here. Now the package on the outside is, a, why is it so dusty? Hold on, look at that guys. Why, <laughs> why is the inside of the box that dusty? That isn't weird. I don't know why it would be dusty inside of a factory sealed box. So putting my tinfoil conspiracy hat on, what if they took this console out of the box, installed some spyware, let it get dusty, and then shipped it back off to me, and man, just a weird circumstance, and it gets even weirder the further we go in the video. But let's put that to the side. We'll go ahead and keep going here, see what else is in here. We've got a charger, HDMI cable, got our little uh, Joy-Con holder. And I mean, like, that appears to be new. Uh, I don't see any scratching on the glossy part, which if this thing was used, you would definitely see some scratching on it because it scratches so easily. Now coming down here to the dock, let's take a look at that. And the dock looks good as well. It's got the, uh, you know, the factory new kind of smell to it. So next up, we should obviously probably test the console out, see if that works. And underneath here, the screen looks fine. I don't see any scratching there. Joy-Con one, Joy-Con two. Let's go ahead and turn this bad boy on. Hey, hey, there it is. We're starting out with some good news. I booted all the way up to the home menu with no issues. Well, it was kind of weird connecting the Wi-Fi for a minute, like it just would not connect, which was odd, but it is working now. And it appears to be like a normal switch. And I mean, just looking around this console, there's very little indication that this is a Japanese console. Like you wouldn't, wouldn't even really know unless you knew what you're looking for. Like looking at the back of the Japanese console here at the bottom versus my North American console here at the top, like the, the writing's a little bit different on here and I'll show some pictures, but uh, it's, you know, nothing noticeable except for this says Japan and that one doesn't. So a few other things I want to try out here to confirm this is a working console. Uh, first of all, I want to try the power adapter and try to charge it. And just by looking at it, it looks like it should work fine. It's 100 to 240 volts and uh, 60 Hertz. So should work fine in North America. Let me just plug it in and make sure though. All right, got the other end plugged in. Let's go ahead and plug in this side. Yep, it is indeed charging up. Cool, so that works. Now, of course, we need to try out a game. That's my main concern here is that for some reason, the game might not work. We'll test it out, of course. We get Mario Kart 8 here, and sure enough, there it is. Let's try to boot it up and make sure it works. So yeah, I mean, as you guys can see here, I'm playing Mario Kart 8, no problem at all. Next thing I wanna try that I is really my main concern is connecting to the eShop and trying to download a game because this is a Japanese console. So I feel like if there's any issue, that will probably be the issue, but let's go ahead and test that out. So here I am scrolling around the eShop, appears to be just like a North American eShop. And now the only thing here is I am a bit sketched out because this console came from Timu and Timu seems to be a bit sketchy. And of course I logged into this console with my personal Nintendo account. And in case you didn't know, your gamer tag and your personal info can be leaked all over the internet and the dark web. So that's where Aura comes into play and that's where they're helping me out today as a sponsor. So what is Aura? Well, Aura is an easy to use app that includes everything you need to stay safe online. And like I just mentioned, they have the whole gamer tag system where you put your gamer tag into their system and they notify you when it's leaked on the dark web. And that's actually come in handy for me because back in 2021, my Xbox gamer tag was leaked on the dark web and I had no idea until I signed up for Aura. They notified me and I was able to lock that account down. And guys, I've been using Aura for six months now and they've helped me out on multiple occasions. Even just back at the beginning of June, they notified me that the third party company had verified my identity, which was really odd considering I hadn't applied for a credit card or anything of that nature. But I called them, got on the phone with a real human within two minutes and they helped me fix the situation. So with all the things that Aura's helped me out with, there's really no reason to not give the two week free trial a go, but wait, there's more. Aura gives you near real time alerts on suspicious credit inquiries. They have a VPN that allows you to stay anonymous on the internet. They protect your devices from viruses. They help you manage what your kids can do on their devices and they even have a password manager. Now I'm sure you already have an app that does maybe one of these things but with Aura you can do all these things in just one app. So let Aura do the hard work for you. They'll keep you safe online and if you sign up with my link on the screen right now you get a free two-week trial and trust me guys you'll be surprised at how much personal information Aura finds on the internet during those two weeks. So go to aura.com slash jrob or scan the QR code on the screen to start your two-week free trial today. Now, something I haven't mentioned yet because I thought it was a one-time thing is that I keep getting this error message where it says I can't connect to the network device, which is very odd because my Wi-Fi is working fine, my phone's connecting fine, my MacBook is connecting with no problem, um, but the Switch keeps doing this every once in a while. And actually, yeah, that's that's this is what happens sometimes when I try to connect to the internet. It just immediately says cannot connect. So I think we are having an issue on this console, but let's go ahead and open up the next one and see if we have the same issue. This next one here should also be a Switch OLED and was also under the $7 listing. Let's go ahead and see what's inside. All right, nice. We got the Splatoon one here. And I actually have my own personal Splatoon console because I just think it looks, I think it's the coolest looking uh, Switch console they've, they've made so far. And again, we definitely have a non- 
Uh, North American version, we also have, what is this? Oh, that looks like an adapter. Okay, so looking at the front here, we definitely, Hong Kong official products. So we got a Hong Kong console, which I've I've heard about. I've seen like rumblings about that on Timu and maybe even the listing said it and I just didn't see it, but it says Hong Kong. So again, another Switch that's like a Switch, but just uh, the non-North American version, which is just odd because clearly I'm here in North America. All right, so flip it open. And this one at least is not all dusty inside. I still don't know why that last one was so dusty inside of the console. But man, this thing, it looks so sick. I love these, uh, the green and, and yellow and purple here on the Joy-Cons. We've also got our HDMI cable, of course. And this console so far looks brand new. And we've got our charger. And of course, yeah, that's our difference here is we have a completely different charging brick uh, because this is for Hong Kong, not for North America. All right, so here's the dock. Oh, baby. Yeah, that thing just, it looks so sick. Like, it's just a, such a such a cool design here. And the next thing I want to do is compare my personal Splatoon Switch to this one because I have the exact same console. So let's go ahead and do that. So here they are side by side, and the graphics on the front look very similar, except for the fact that this one says Special Edition. Uh, the Hong Kong one says Splatoon 3. And then I also noticed here in the logo, the top left-hand corner, um, it's a little bit brighter on the North American one and a little bit darker on the Hong Kong version. Don't know why. A little bit odd, and then of course OLED down here and Nintendo Switch OLED on this side. So let's go ahead and take out the console now. See what it looks like on the inside. Make sure it looks good. A little, a little bit of uh, debris inside of there, but no scratches, so it appears to be brand new. And of course, got that nice, those nice decals in the back, which look just look amazing. And then flipping to the back, the interesting thing is that the Hong Kong and Japanese OLEDs both have the exact same writing on the back, whereas the North American one did not, which is a little bit odd, but you know, it doesn't really matter. But let's go ahead and turn this bad boy on. Make sure it works. Three, two, one, we got the power on. There it is, nice, the screen is working. So I booted up to the home menu again with no issues, except for the, well, minus the internet issues, which we'll try to solve in a little bit. Let's go ahead and put in a, a US game cartridge, a North American game cartridge here and see if that works. And sure enough, pops right up. Let's go ahead and open it up. And two minutes later, we're already into a game, which is of course the great thing about a Switch right now. It's kind of a nice change of pace. You don't have to connect to the internet. You don't have to download updates, all that annoying stuff. We're just playing the game. Now, the only thing I wanna try here is this, this power brick. Plug it into this adapter and I guess it'll work. Let's look at these, the power rating here. Uh, yeah, 100 to 240 volts, 60 hertz. Yeah, it should work fine. So let's go ahead and plug it in and see if it works. And yep, it's charging. So it works, nice. Uh, hey guys, so I just turned on my thermal camera and I got this, I guess a secret message from Timu. Yeah, not sure what to do about it. So I made a couple interesting discoveries about the whole internet situation here. And what I figured out is that the Wi-Fi channels supported in Japan and Hong Kong are slightly different than the five gigahertz Wi-Fi channels in North America. So they're literally just locked out on these consoles. Like you, you cannot use those channels. Um, that's definitely an issue if you're buying these to use in North America, unless you actually go into your router and change your Wi-Fi channels, which most people don't want to do. Our third console here is a Switch light which honestly has nothing to do with a seven dollar switch it's like a completely different listing but i wanted to buy one just just because and at first glance opening this console up i thought it was a north american switch because it's just i mean it says nintendo switch light on here no different language but coming on here to the bottom you can see it as a japan uh, switch light we do have an adapter here which is odd because it's supposed to be japan so i don't need an adapter let's go ahead and open it up and see what it looks like inside all right, let's pull this out. Of course, got our yellow switch light on top here. And then of course, in here we have our power brick, which will work fine without the adapter. I don't know why we have an adapter. And uh, that's about it. All right, I'm taking the switch out. Let's go ahead and see if it turns on. All right, so here we are booting up. And man, it is a shocking difference going from an OLED switch to just a normal screen. It's just like the OLED is so much better. And again, here we are with the next console only being, being able to see the 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi. We cannot see the five gigahertz Wi-Fi, which like if you know the limitations there, it's not a big deal. You can get around them. But the fact is that Timu is, Timu is marketing these towards like US buyers. So it's a, uh, yes, yeah, that's an issue. All right, guys, so this switch light is working with no issues. Connected to the internet. Of course, I'm playing Mario Kart 8 right now. And uh, let's go ahead and move on to our final switch, which is another switch OLED. So I wanted to hop in here and explain how you can get the $7 switch. And my short answer is you can't, it's basically impossible. Uh, but technically there's two different ways. First of all, you log in at 10 o'clock every day. And if you're one of the first 10 people to buy it, you get a $7 switch. The second way is you play their rewards game, spend a bunch of wheels in the app and refer a ton of people. And then you can get you know some money off and get a cheap switch. But in my experience, both of those are basically impossible. I tried both those methods, they did not work. And so now you're probably wondering how do you have the $7 switch though? And the answer is, I bought the $7 switch. I just had to pay more than $7. I paid like between $320 and $340 for each one. I'll throw the screenshots on the screen of what I paid. But yeah, in my experience, this part of it is pretty close to a scam. I wouldn't say a scam yet because there are people online that claim to have gotten it for seven bucks, but you know, I can't verify. All right, final console here. And oh baby, we got the Zelda switch. 
finally. Last but not least. All right, yeah, so definitely is Japanese. You can see here on the bottom it says JPN for Japanese. So I'm not sure, again, why they included this adapter that's only for the Hong Kong consoles. They put this tape all over the box, so you gotta be very careful taking it off so you don't mess up the box. And I mean, the box is a bit beat up. They only put it in like one layer of bubble wrap in a uh, package, there was no box. So I don't know if this came from China. I would assume so, but I honestly, I'm not sure. And oh yeah, there it is. We got our Joy-Cons here. We got our, our uh, Switch here. And of course it's it's not dusty, which is <laughs> good to see. Still can't believe that first one was dusty. But let's go ahead and pull the Joy-Cons out here. These things are nice. I have not seen one of these consoles in person yet. Just a normal Japanese power cable that works in the US as well. Yeah, looks like it's brand new. I don't see any scratching there. Oh yeah, that thing is nice. Like I said, I have not seen this in person yet, but that is that is a very nice design. I love how, I love how Nintendo is still putting out cool special edition consoles, um, unlike, uh, hint, hint, Sony and Xbox. We need some cool limited edition Series Xs and PS5s. Ain't that hard, let's just do it, man. But this thing is nice. But now, of course, for the true test of does this console work? Go ahead and snap these Joy-Cons in, turn the, hit the on button, and there it is. Let's go. <laughs> and man, like I, like I said earlier, just a night and day difference between the OLED screen and the regular screen. And again, here we are on the internet page, and nope, no 5G. So um, it works, but that is a bit disappointing. And they're like, like I said, they're marketing it towards the US, so not a huge fan of that. For the third time today, I'm schooling these CPUs in Mario Kart 8 on a Switch OLED, and yeah, this console's working no problem. And it's just an overall very odd situation. Like, why, is, why does Timu have all these OLED switches? And why are they all Hong Kong and Japanese? I mean, my guess is they're getting them really cheap somewhere and selling them there. Uh, I don't know, just a weird overall. So thanks for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know down below if you think the $7 switch from Timu is a scam. And I'll see you next time.